Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Here we are slaving over a hot stove. Yum. Mmm. Smells so good. It's really good. What are we making? We are making a Belgianish beer. Belgianish? It's based on, uh, if you've seen the shows in the past, it's based on the Belgian blonde or Belgian brunette or it's a recurring you know, uh, grain bill and hopping schedule. So, so this is kind of a, this has become a pretty standard recipe for you. Yeah. It's and the, the, the skeleton of it is. I gotcha. Which is, uh, let me read my, oh, read my brand new brewers. This is the first entry in my brand new brewers logbook. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with, uh, oh, and we might as well show the process while we're, while mm -hmm. we're talking about it. 10 pounds or four and a half kilograms of Belgian pills, four pounds or 1.8 kilograms of malted wheat. And that goes into, I used a, a 21 quarts or 19.8 liters of water at 162 degrees Fahrenheit or 72 C, which will give, it gave me a, a mash rest temperature of 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 C. And I rested there for 60 minutes. And then I used the batch sparge method. My favorite. Uh, I did the, I took the first runnings, I did a Vorloff, and then I took the first runnings, and then after all, those were all gone, I did, uh, I, I added 3.25 gallons, or 12 liters, of water at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, or 77C, mm. and mixed the grains up in the mash tun, reestablished the grain uh, bed with the Vorloff, and then ran the second runnings into the kettle. Then we brought them up to a boil and we mm -hmm. added, uh, and that'll, that gave us six and a half gallons or 24.6 liters uh, pre-boil volume and we added 1.5 ounces or 42.5 grams of Hollertower hops. So, metric people ought to be happy with all that. I'd say. <laughs> but. I'm confused, <clears throat> but. But there's something missing. Since it's our, our the, Belgianish recipe, yep. sugar. Sure. Usually, what we've done in the past with this recipe is added the, you know, the bag of the Belgian candy syrup. Right. We've used clear. We've used amber. We've used the D, uh, D one, the we D two. We made our own once. We made our own once. Mm -hmm. All with the same base recipe. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna today we're gonna play with molasses. Yeah. You know anything about molasses? Makes good rum. <laughs> That's right. It's essentially what we've got here uh, is uh, an unsulfured molasses. Which I think is important. It's very important. Yep. It's not black strap. The label says original, unsulfured. And I read on the website from this particular brand that it is essentially cane juice. Right. So it's not processed. We don't have to worry about getting any off flavors from that. Now, in this recipe, Oh, he's pouring. <laughs> I just happen to have a keg right here. That's why I came over. Oh, and you get the first... Yay. Hetty, Hetty pour. Hetty Lamar. <laughs> you beat me to that one. <laughs> it's Hedley. Hedley Lamar. Hedley Lamar. Now. Mm-mm. That's a pretty beer. It's a lovely beer. Cheers. Cheers. Way. Um... Yeah, that's a Belgian triple. That's really nice. Mm. Now, this beer, in addition to the ingredients that we've already got in there, mm -hmm. has two pounds of cane sugar. This is what cane sugar looks like. <laughs> that's a, that's, a, that's a, uh, a visual aid there. Yeah. Uh, two pounds or uh, 900 kilograms, I believe, of cane sugar, and then half a pound of molasses. And I actually went out to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash basicbrewing, and said, I'm making a molasses beer today. And uh, people were skeptical about the effect of molasses were. on the beer. Uh, yes. So I backed off. I was going to put a full pound in, but I backed off. And, and At least you didn't stop short. <laughs> That's, That's my move. That's my move. <laughs> Show we're stealing. Nothing, we're nothing but cultural references. So, so what do you think? I mean, I was surprised that the color of this beer was not darker. Yeah, I'm surprised at that, and I'm surprised that I don't actually taste molasses. I was expecting to taste a molasses bomb. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of molasses in that. I don't get that. I can get that it's round and full and it's, and it's sweet. Right. It's well balanced, don't get me wrong. 
but this is a it, there's a lot of sweet in this beer, mm -hmm. and so I get that, and I think the molasses contributes to that mouthfeel, but I don't I don't taste like a ginger nap ginger nap a ginger snap cookie. You, <laughs> you know, take what I mean? a ginger nap after. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> if you're lucky, but uh, but yeah, I mean when it warms up a little bit, you can get a little bit of that molasses note but it's not i thought i was going to be making like a belgian double or something like that it's very nice beer so what we're doing today one of the reasons where we're doing the show is to kind of show you that the value of taking a recipe and repeating it and tweaking it along the way making little changes and that way you can kind of experiment and you you can discover what the different ingredients bring to the table that's right so what we're going to do is we're going to back off to one pound of the cane sugar, mm -hmm. and we're Over upping fine. the amount of the molasses to a full pound instead of half a pound. Uh, so we're just going to see what happens. Yeah, I think this is great. This is what you do. This is how your beers get better. You know, this is you know you've brewed this basic beer a lot of times now, oh. and uh, for me, my kind of basic grain bill has become so many pounds of Maris Otter, you know, eight to ten to twelve, depending on my gravity that I'm after and, and a little crystal and a little victory. And I really like that mm -hmm. in some proportion. And I keep messing with that grain build. And then I'm really hooked on Chinook hops and, you know, mm -hmm. and so I know that I'm really basically just making IPAs at the moment, but it's so interesting to see the differences, just the, the ratio differences. Today we're doing that with these two different sugars. And by the way, this beer, uh, it was like 9% alcohol, so... <laughs> so you turn into Foster and, Brooks. And, <laughs> and we'll, we'll ferment with... Um, uh, I've got a two-liter starter of uh, White Labs 500, which I believe is the Trappist ale yeast. Yeah. So, uh, shall we add the sugar? Let's do it. I'll stir if I'll you pour. pour. Just hold on carefully. To, oh, i got to stir right-handed, which is... Well, i, I got to pour left-handed. Oh. I am left-handed. Shall we switch places? Well, I don't care. <laughs> Wait, now I gotta pour right-handed. Oh no, I'm going. I'm not that much of a klutz. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> the famous last words. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Hold my beer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just stirring. We're just making sure this dissolves. Uh, when you're adding sugar, uh, especially when we add the molasses, we're just making sure that it doesn't go straight to the bottom and, yeah. and hang there. Yeah. It'll and scorch. But you add sugar to a recipe if you want to thin it out a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it, say, for instance, if you're making a big double IPA, a big high gravity double IPA, uh, even when you're doing all grain and you're mashing at a low temperature, with a lot of gravity, you're going to have a lot of residual gra or, uh, sugars in there at the end of the fermentation. So. Uh, right? Yeah, and then there's this thing too. Oh, now I have to do use both hands. <laughs> um, so the purpose of adding sugar uh, in some recipes is to uh, is to lighten up and dry out the the mouthfeel of the beer. And the wort is actually well, it's darkening quite a lot. Yeah, it's darkening, which is why I thought it was going to be you know a darker beer in the finish. Mm-hmm. Well, it's hard to understand in Finnish unless you speak it. <laughs> That's good. Okay, You're I got just it just being all. greedy after that. Well, you can, and you can lick the bowl. Nah, I don't. <laughs> if it was chocolate, I'd lick the bowl. <laughs> so there you go. We'll take a shot of this uh, afterwards. Mm, it even smells, you know, kind of caramely and molasses-y. Right. Yeah. Right. Now wow. you can you can add this at just about any time of the in the boil. Yep. It's going to darken more if you add it earlier in the boil, probably. Do you think that if you added it like the last ten minutes, flame out essentially, that you'd retain more of the? Well, in fact, I added this on this one. I added the sugar fifteen minutes before the end of the boil. Hmm. So there you go. I mean, there's just so much, uh, so much that it's fighting against that half a pound of molasses was fighting against as far as being diluted. Right. So anyway, so there you go. We're going to chill it. Uh, we're going to boil, finish the boil, an hour long boil. Uh, and then we're going to chill it and then uh, pitch the yeast 
and aerate it. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll come, we'll show you in a, in a, a following show what the difference was. It'd, it'd be a good side by side. There's if not there's going to be any left. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you right now. <laughs> Bottle some of that it's up. It's going way fast. <laughs> well, there you go. So play with your molasses. <laughs> but don't tell anybody. <laughs> Get your beer. Get your beer. Cheers. Cheers. Happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. The good thing of it, if you ever wonder how much is in your keg, you take it out to outside and the condensation level will show you right there. Boy, I've drank a lot of that beer. <laughs>